This is Bibsy, brought to you by the Division of Communication and Performing Arts. Hello and welcome to This is Bibsy. My name is Scott Wayne. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we have some two special guests here with me right here in the studio. We have the one and only Dominic Mercer, as well as Steven Garcia, ranked top five, in the top five of the national debate this year. How are you guys doing today? Doing very doing well. Pretty good. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Now, we just got a couple questions to ask you guys. You know, for me, I've never been part of a debate team, so I've definitely got a lot of questions <laughs> of how this whole thing works. So, speaking of that, since I've never been there, Go ahead and describe it, how it works to us. Like what's, what's the whole process of being in a debate, uh, topics, things like that? What's the basic one-on-one? -on -one? Want to take this? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so essentially the way it works is they'll put up postings, mm -hmm. which the postings tell you who your opponent is and where you're going to be. Okay. And then we go through what we call the striking process, which is basically you have a, like a little slip with, a, with five resolutions on it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you each strike one, starting off with the negative, until there's one left. And then you have about 25 minutes from there to have a case prepped and be ready to debate. Wow, so it's pretty on the go, quick at it, got to think fast on your feet kind yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah. Cool. So what, uh, how long do these debates usually last? Uh, about 30 minutes. Yeah. About 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Now, um, I guess, what is the real goal of a debate, like, are you supposed to actually win it, or is it just more about the argument? Well, two different different universities and uh, community colleges would give you different answers, but Bipsy's mm -hmm. answer to it would always be academic debate. Winning it mm -hmm. would be a pleasure or a benefit, but we're here at the end of the day to dive into academic debate and learn about whatever the resolution calls for. I got you. I got you. Now. How, how many debates have y'all already been in so far, you two, uh, personally? Well, what about you, Doug? Uh, we've been in, what, seven or eight tournaments That's now? Eight tournaments. Eight tournaments? Goodness. I don't so know how many debates that actually at is. At least 70 apiece. Wow. That's Roughly. that's a lot of debating. Yeah. So the Super Bowl, let's debate it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wow. Goodness gracious. So I guess uh, let's start with each of you. Uh, Dominic, yeah. what was your favorite topic? That you've ever had a debate about? I that would definitely be which is better, waffles or toast. Waffles or toast. And it came down to really advocating for which was more adaptable within round. And so mm -hmm. I, I think I kind of cheated the other person because waffles are definitely a lot more adaptable. I used the little squares in round. Hmm. But uh, it just kind of it was a really funny, and I'll never forget about it. Mm. What about you, Stephen? Um, one of my favorite ones was probably the Hyde Amendment should be repealed. Um, I'm really big on uh, constitutional law mm. and the likes so fantastic fantastic we go from chicken and waffles to congressional it's yes, <laughs> a whole, whole, whole mix yes yeah. so you have a wide variety yeah. of mm -hmm. different topics it seems like oh yeah uh, i guess what would be the most absurd topic y'all have ever had would it, would it be you know waffles or toast uh, you mm. go ahead with that one. We saw one. We haven't debated it, but we saw it on the list of resolutions from last tournaments. It was, uh, we should light puppies on fire. Oh, I was about was that the resolution. One. Now, just a little bit of clarity, guys. We weren't advocating <laughs> for actually lighting puppies on fire. The affirmative gets the ability to define our resolution, so puppies could be defined as something completely yeah. different than puppers and doggos. Oh, okay. I got you. At first, I was like, hmm. Yeah, let me you clear some air. Advised. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dominic, you ranked, was it number two? Yes, number two Number two nationals. nationals, and yes. it was number four, four correct? Yeah. For the mid-season results. Wow, yeah. wow, that's uh, national tournament styles and national seasons, I mean. That is fantastic, that's fantastic. Now, um, what topic did you actually win with for these nationals? Was it like one specific topic, or was it a multiple all back to back? Oh well, uh, how do you actually win? Well, for right now, we're on kind of like a point process. So each okay. win within a tournament gets you a certain amount of points. Winning uh, out what we call out rounds once the tournament's uh, been divided into a playoff, you mm -hmm. get more points for there. But then we will have the actual national tournament coming up in, I believe it's March, yeah. mid-March, and there will be a specific tournament where everybody gets together and the national champions decided from there. Wow, that is fantastic. Now, uh, I, I know there's a few people that are kind of curious how do you join the debate team? Like, is it a big process, or w w how do you get started? Show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just show up. Just show up. Okay. Now, do you have to like? I, I know uh, Bob Alexander. He's oh, the yeah. coach of the debate team. Do you have to win a 
win an argument with uh, um, Mr. Alexander, or is it? Oh no, we can teach it? really anybody. Yeah. Specifically looking at us, when we first showed when up, we, showed we, up, we, we didn't were know anything. anything, man. It was really hard. We had to learn the format. We were kind of just thrown into the fire. Yeah. So if we can do it, pretty much anybody can do it. We hold practices every Tuesday at two thirty in room three sixteen, isn't it? No, uh, three twelve, I think. Three twelve in building D. So that's, you just come there and learn some basic argumentation skills and we can make a debater out of anybody. Fantastic, fantastic. So like if I, if I wanted to learn, I could just show up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I need, to, I need to show up sometime, that's for sure. <laughs> so now with going to debates, and, and this is y'all's pretty much life right now within college, right? Yes. <laughs> so pretty much take up all your time? The majority of it. Yeah. yeah. Now, how does this help you handle arguments in your personal lives? Uh, well, specifically looking at my work, I work at Chili's and man, we get oh, into well. a lot of arguments, <laughs> the customers, manager wise, and it's, you know, I've learned formats in order to, hey, here's the reason why I'm right and here's the reasons why you're wrong. I got you. Now, but well, you know, the old saying, customer is always right. I guess so, you got your point, but what we say behind closed doors, but this doesn't get back to Chili's. That's true, that's true, <laughs> that's very true. Fantastic. Uh, you think you handle stuff, you know, relationship-wise and different things. So what are some of the skill sets that you think so far in your debating career that you've actually uh, used or will use in your future careers? Definitely argumentation yeah. would be the first and main reason. Uh, it, it, debate really handles your argumentation, but not only that, your public speaking, you know, it mm -hmm. really transforms how you speak uh, to general and mass crowds. Uh, I mm -hmm. may not be the best example, but I know there are some great debaters <laughs> out there. Hey, yeah, yeah. rank number two and number four, that's definitely <laughs> so far one of the top of the line, that's for sure. And um, see what he brought up, that, you know, one of the things that's really um, special to IPDA mm -hmm. is our judges are typically what we call lay judges, so they're mm -hmm. not, you know, they don't, have, they don't have bachelor's degrees, they're not educated in, you know, economics, they're just regular everyday people. And so it's not so much, you don't have to appeal to somebody with a master's degree in economics. You just have to appeal to the average person. Mm -hmm. You have to come up with something that they will understand. I got you, I got you. So, um, do y'all ever have like, when you're at a debate, is it a pretty rough crowd or is it very quiet? Like, like you would say, like a court appeal, things like that. How is it really the environment? The environment yeah. within the debate room is very quiet. There's general etiquette that people follow. So when the speakers are speaking, everyone's quiet and listening no matter what's said or anything like that. Now within the prep room, that is a chaotic and mass, <laughs> mass environment where everyone's scrambled to learn knowledge within 30 minutes. I got you. So what is, uh, if, if you don't mind, not revealing any deep, dark secrets here as far as your process of preparing, mm -hmm. what is your, like, and I'll go to each of y'all, what is your specific process that you go through your mind in getting prepared for a topic? Well, as he says, we have 30 minutes, so I try mm -hmm. to break it down. The first 10 minutes I generally spend trying to understand what the resolution is calling for, mm -hmm. so that way I know what I need to advocate or you know try to disprove. And then the next 10 minutes I want to spend um, trying to apply that and how what I'm going to say in a case and figure out three main points of why I'm right within a case. And then the last 10 minutes, I kind of want to go over my speech and what I'm going to say in round. Fantastic. How about you, uh, Stephen? Uh, I prefer to work a little bit more on the fly <laughs> than uh, <laughs> Dom here does. Um, for me, it just kind of depends on the resolution. Um, policy rounds are my favorite. They, uh, with wor certain wordings of the resolutions, the affirmative has to prove that, you know, here's the problem with the status quo, and then they have to provide a plan to you know, fix the status quo, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, so on things like that, I focus on, okay, you know, like, what's the problem? And then I, I focus more on finding a solution to the problem mm -hmm. than in an organization. I just kind of wing it. <laughs> <laughs> Improvisational at the very finest. Exactly. Right? So uh, I guess because you definitely guys have come a long way, it looks like it's seven, eight months to <laughs> reach into the top five. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So what really, like, uh, wh why did y'all really want to get started in debate? What made y'all really interested in joining the debate team? Well, I definitely had a professor that I had uh, here at the university. Her name was Miss Catherine Gregorio. I might mm -hmm. be saying her name wrong, but she was basically trying to help me pay for university or pay for uh, community college. And mm -hmm. with that, she led me towards debate and it had really opened brand new doors and has opened new parts of my life. So not only did I pay for uh, my community college experience, but I've also learn life skills as we've talked about. That's fantastic. What about you, Steven? I love politics. <laughs> um, it, it's all I keep up with. It's all I do in my spare time. And um, being able to go spend weekends talking about politics has just kind of led me into it. Mm -hmm. A few and far between. Some people don't know politics for a lot of people. It's like, <coughs> should we talk about it? Should we not talk about it? But it's kind of what y'all do, right? Right. <laughs> so 
Uh, what, I guess, another question for you guys is where do you see yourself maybe about a year down the road? Do you want to continue here at Bipsy or is it, um, y'all going to be moving on? What do you think? A year down the road, I definitely <laughs> see myself finishing up here at Bipsy, but mm -hmm. not only that, the legacy of what we leave behind at the mm -hmm. debate program. Uh, I know in a recent article, Bob said we set the standard high, so I want to make sure the rest, the, uh, the rest of the debaters can uh, follow that standard and maybe even raise it further beyond us. Fantastic. What about you, Steve? Um, yeah, I'll be finished up here at Bipsy ne next spring. Um, I just essentially like to focus on, like Dominic said, leave, making sure there's people that will raise the bar farther than we have mm -hmm. when we get ready to leave. That's fantastic. So uh, I'm going to start with each of y'all again. So Dominic, what do you see as your personal career start right after college? Right after college, uh, probably a history professor because I want to continue really? on to uh, graduate school and one of my plans is to teach at a university that offers that with a history program, see if I couldn't do some institutional things. So. Wow. And then you know, debate definitely helps that because it would lay a format and be able to help me speak to a mass crowd. That's fantastic. I know college kids can be a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Steven? What's your career um, plans afterwards? Is it after politics, I, I'm sure? Yeah, after I uh, finish up my... Uh, Bachelor's in uh, criminal justice, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go to law school. Go to law school. All right. So are you wanting to kind of just stick to, like, political, or lawyer? What's kind of your specific job? You're not sure yet. Um, eventually, I'd like to go into politics. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to go into criminal law for a while because I feel like you definitely have an opportunity to kind of uh, build a name for yourself there. Fantastic. Uh, what would be some advice that you would give, like, some new debaters? Like, if they were just fresh in, they just started with Mr. Alexander on the debate team here, or if they're watching from a different institution, they're just wanting to kind of, hey, you know, these are where the national rankings are at, let me see what they're doing. What would be the best advice you can give people who are just new into the debating scene? Don't be overwhelmed, because that was definitely our biggest flaw. It really comes down to three reasons why you believe you're right with this resolution. So basically, it's extemporaneous just speaking. Fantastic. Well, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with some more questions with the only, one and only Dominic Mercer and Steven Garcia. Garcia. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back at this break, guys. The counselor asked how much my husband drinks. I said, not that much. I don't know why I said that. He always drank too much. But I guess I'm so used to keeping it a secret that I didn't tell the truth to myself or anyone else. My husband has drinks with friends after work. He has a couple of drinks at home with dinner and a few more while we watch TV. Pretty soon he's shouting at me and blaming me for all of his problems. I just can't take it anymore. A counselor recommended al family groups. She said al members have had experiences just like mine, and they would explain how al is helping them. I didn't want to go to al but I'm sure glad I did. Is someone's drinking breaking your heart? You might be surprised at what you can learn at an al family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al Hi, I'm Rusty Wallace. In racing, the driver is only as good as the team they've got behind them. The same principle holds true in business. A successful company invests in employees that are highly skilled and display good character. Our return and service men and women fit that bill. They've shown that they've got the qualities that make them real assets to any company that hires them. In the military, their education may include training in technology, communications, and logistics. But more importantly are the values that they embrace like courage, integrity, and leadership, the same values that can make a business successful. So if you're an employer, on behalf of the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, I want to urge you to hire smart and bet on a vet. It's also a great way to thank them for the service they provided on our behalf. To learn more, call the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes at 1-888-44-SALUTE or visit saluteheroes.org on the web. Thank you. I didn't want to talk. She just sat with me. That was all I really needed. Come on, Mark. We got back, and of course we went to different cities. One day he called me out of the blue, and it's comforting to know that I always can count on him to have my back. We hadn't talked for a while, and then she texted me, 
and we went for a walk. She called me from time to time. I really didn't think I needed any help. I was away from my family during the holidays, and a friend invited me to their house for dinner. It really meant a lot. He knew I was having a rough week, so he asked me to go fishing with him. My friend knew that I didn't want to go out, so she brought me dinner instead. It took me from being really depressed to feeling like somebody cared to give me some hope. Just that one text. Be there. Your call. Your presence. Your words. Your support. Be there and help save a life. This is Bipsy. Up to you about vision, communication, and performing arts. Welcome back to This Is Bipsy. My name is Scott Wayne. You're hanging out today with us, the two in the like top five national rankings, the one and only Dominic Mercer and Steven Garcia. How are you guys doing today again? Welcome back. I'm doing very well. Very good. So we already were kind of talking about a lot of different things. A whole lot of information <laughs> was going down, that's for sure. So I want to kind of just go over and review some of the things for people just tuning in. So we, we kind of went over a little bit of how the debate works in general. So can y'all go ahead and give us a little overview of how a debate actually works? Just a quick one-on-one -on -one, one more time for us. Yeah, basically, as my uh, partner had said, we have a uh, striking process where there's five topics. The affirmative, who's advocating for whatever the topic says, and the mm -hmm. negative, who's going against it. Strikes down until it's just one that they've agreed upon. Then they get 30 minutes of what my partner calls prep time, where it's, mm -hmm. you know you get the general information as much as you can about it. And from there, it's just academic debate, learning it, um, whether it's true or not, and deciding a winner. I got you. Now, there's, there's been a lot of debates. Yep, we've already talked about some interesting debates. Yes. Uh, some were like, uh, was, it, was it waffles and toast? Yes. And, or what would you like better? Or what one's better? Round or square? A lot of interesting debates. <laughs> now, at the same time, on a little serious note, have you ever had like a, a topic that was a little too iffy for you guys? Y'all like a little too controversial or? Well, luckily it was between us on a practice round, but I guess the most controversial topic we've ever had was what, is the KKK uh, a hate group? No, should, the KKK should, should be, be labeled, labeled a terrorist group. A terrorist like group, that. that's terrorist it, yeah. Ooh, my goodness. Yes. Now, do y'all have the right to refuse a debate if it's too much of a if topic? Once you strike, it's you're pretty stuck, much yeah. because you've considered you've agreed upon it, so. Oh, so, but there is an agreement at the very beginning, hey, here's a topic, yeah. there's go no, ahead and uh, go with it. There's mm -hmm. no going back on there's the There's no turning back. Oh my goodness. Now, have you ever had any kind of outbursts in the middle of a debate? Someone just <laughs> saying, I don't like this topic, or they're trying to boo, or any kind of bad etiquette? No, um, not really. Not yet that we've encountered. I got you. You heard any stories about it? Not really. Not, not really. Yet. Not really. <laughs> seven, eight months doing it? Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. So, um, well, I guess you would say we, we kind of talked about the, the waffles and toast thing. Uh, but during the break, y'all kind of tell me about some interesting topics. Hey, go ahead and give me another one of those. Was it One Direction out here? Oh, other than the One Direction topic, <laughs> we did have one instance where we went into a realm with one topic and came out with two topics. And this just happened. Uh, this happened just recently. Just we recently. At, um, really? LSU. Um, for team debate, mm -hmm. and uh, the resolution was the voting public needs SPC. The SPC, yeah. And um, no one could figure out what the SPC was. Hmm. And uh, it, it's actually something from like St. Petersburg. It's um, like they developed something called Easy Vote, which mm -hmm. basically like allows you to register to vote online and stuff. Hmm. And um, that's what we found. But we found it in the last we 10 found minutes. Like, yeah. And our other part are the people who were advocating for the topic and are the ones who get the right to set up the topic mm -hmm. didn't find it at all. They oh. talked about some, um, it's basically like a nonprofit organization that focuses on reducing the carbon impact of corporations. So, Interesting. So we went into round and basically said that can't be what we're talking about because the resolution itself talks about the Vote. uh, voting thing, but not only that, the negative can't uh, at, uh, argue against this because the general public isn't in yeah. nonprofit organizations. But we had to argue their case anyways because we didn't want to be wrong because the judge right. didn't believe us. So we kind of take credit as the first debate team to ever go in with one topic and come out with two whole cases, two different topics. That would be an interesting case. That would be an interesting <laughs> debate, that's for sure. Um, do you, is it able, let's say someone who's just new into debating everything, could they come out and watch as a spectator? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. you, it's open to general public. Yeah. Open to general public, so anybody can come in, watch it, and take Gen notes. I mean, they can judge if they want to. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's right, you, you were talking about that. They come in and judge, just as mm -hmm. a, so they have like a whole jury set up and everything like that? That's a little um, different. It's one person for individual rounds, okay. for prelim rounds, and then you have three judges for uh, out rounds or elimination rounds. I got you. The playoffs, essentially. <laughs> the play <laughs> playoffs. 
So um, we, we've talked about some of the funniest topics. We've talked some of the most difficult topics. Um, what was, okay, I, you told about one earlier. What was the weirdest topic I've ever had? Weirdest. The weirdest topic. Not necessarily, I, we, we hear a lot of goofy topics, some serious topics. What would be the weirdest topic that y'all have ever had to I think about? I the quote, uh, quote resolutions are, what was it, quote resolutions are a good idea, oh, or, yeah, are good for debate. Yeah, uh, we had that in team uh, at Southern Forensics, and it was just really weird. We were advocating for taking out a yeah. whole part of debate itself. We had to find something that was wrong with using quotes. Hmm. Uh, Sounds like a debate within a debate. Yes. Sounds kind of It was debate exception. <laughs> <laughs> Debating debate theory. Interesting. That's very interesting. So uh, what's kind of the breakdown? So how many times a week do you actually practice? We practice two times a week. We get mm -hmm. that benefit because we have the individual practices. Mm -hmm. We not only that, we have team, team also. practice. Because we do another set of IPDA debate, which is team debate. Yeah. Okay, so now, does debate kind of break into different, uh, I guess you say different types of rounds? You say, I heard y'all talking about individual mm -hmm. debates and then team debates. Yeah, What's the big so, difference? Um, individual debate is just, it's two people, one affirmative, one negative. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, we just recently started competing in what's called team debate. Mm -hmm. um, Team debate is, it's very interesting because you have essentially twice as much time to construct your cases and mm -hmm. twice as much time to rebut your cases. Mm -hmm. So whereas individual debates are very, they don't go into detail very much because you only have five minutes that you can actually make, make your arguments. Right. With team, because you have all that extra time, what you end up is with much more in-depth and more detailed debates. And not only that, when I'm weaker in policy, I have yeah. him to pick me up and he's weaker in sports and he has me to pick him up. So y'all can tag team a lot. Are y'all a team yourself? Yes. A lot. So that's fantastic, fantastic. So um, y'all ever <laughs> in the practice room debate amongst each other? No, 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 we'd rather do this. No, I'd rather do it this way. I'd rather debate different policies, different things like that. Y'all ever argue with amongst yourselves over how Honestly, to handle we a debate? Normally, we, our formula like for, for success. Like for team debate? Yeah, for team, yeah. For team no, team. I mean. Because our formula for success is pretty much the same thing without revealing too much. It's just uh, gathering statistical data, yeah. and, you know, whatever that data implies, telling that story. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. Fantastic. So when y'all go into the actual room, and it's, it's showtime. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's showtime to be out there. Um, do y'all kind of, y'all both have to go up there on your own time, even if it's a team debate? So like, do one go one at a time and talk, come sit yeah. down, other one goes up? Um, so first, because I'm the first negative and the first affirmative speaker, mm -hmm. what that basically means is I will go up and do top case analysis. So mm -hmm. I'm telling the judge, hey, this is what the topic says. This is what we have to prove or disprove. Mm -hmm. And here's our first and second reasons as of why. And then in the next, there'll be some cross-examination times. But in the next speech, he'll jump up. And yeah. he, he basically- I just kind of build on to whatever he's already provided. Um, and then basically, like, he, he opens it up, I close it out. Um, it's just what, what works. I got you. I got you. So, um, like I said, we've, we've kind of talked about what skill sets that, you know, someone's coming brand new into it. Mm -hmm. They want to join the debate team. You said they could just come on in and just join. Uh, now, is there anything, like, prerequisites, I guess you'd say, they had to have or anything like that? Any kind of experience beforehand? Um, not necessarily experience. Um, something that will help greatly um, getting it, getting into um, debate is just knowing what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, there's always resolutions about, you know, what's go what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, always make it onto, onto the sheets. Yeah, in, in as and, far uh, as from the Kardashians all the way oh, yes. to current actual res or propositions within the government. So when he says no, what's going on, he means from cultural yeah. all the way to policy. You know. That's fantastic. So, so you guys can definitely have everything from what's going on with Teen Magazine yes. <laughs> uh, to here at the school system in Shreveport and Bocha City, yeah. as well as to what's happening at the White House. Yep. Yeah. So it's a pretty, pretty, pretty broad spectrum of topics y'all can dwell into. Uh, who actually sets these topics? Is there like a board or is it just uh, it's like the, the people, that, people that run the tournaments? Oh, yeah. um, Usually they're directors of uh, their respective communication or forensics. So, I mean, they're qualified people. Okay. So there's no one who can kind of affect those necessarily for a specific topic that they want. Is it, you ever had that kind of favor? No. Role? If you end up putting in resolutions, you're really not supposed to be I thought you were actually involved in you? the tournament. Mm, so um, do not do that, guys. Do but not do it's that. only within your own tournament. Yeah. So like, if we plan on debating team tournament here at our own, so tournament, we can't we, really get yeah. involved with yeah, we're any of the resolutions. Resolutions, and we yeah, can't absolutely. know what's actually yeah. in there. 
Wow, that's fantastic. So now, if you're like, so you, this is your home base, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, Pepsi is your your home home team that you guys are on. Has there ever been, you know, kind of persuasion from different coaches in different places trying to like, hey, you know, you know, transfer over here or you should do this? Do y'all ever have that kind of thing? In the, in well, the there's team? always LSUS. They're kind of our sister school on the debate circuit, so mm -hmm. you know, there's kind of some impliedness to go towards mm -hmm. them. Yeah. But uh, other than that, we've had uh, a couple coaches reach out to us and. and throw something out there, but we kind of nudge back at them and right. ask where the financial scholarships are yeah. and see where that conversation <laughs> uh, the goes. Money, you know, scholarship is what a lot of it's about, especially being a broke college student, right? right. <laughs> so well, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, for me, I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I've always wanted to, you know, probably join a debate team and, uh, you know, you, you can acquire better public speaking skills and thinking yeah. on the fly. Um, what do you think some of the jobs um, would be the best using this skill set? I know the ones that you guys personally have told me. But what skill sets do you think these and what jobs could these be a good influencer to afterwards? I mean, I think public speaking and argumentation skills will benefit you just about anywhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I can't really think of any jobs where you're not going to be talking, you know, where you're not going to be talking to somebody, whether it's, you know, customer service, call center, teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, if you find a job without argumentation, let me know. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> So I guess, what would you say, I'll, I'll start with uh, Dominic, what was the uh, most improved skill from when you first joined the debate team to now? Definitely my argumentation. I know we keep touching back at it, but mm -hmm. I was always the guy within conflict, you know, I'm just going to lay back and let you say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. But now I've got that formula when somebody approaches me like, hey, A, you're wrong here, B, you're wrong here, C, you're wrong here. And for these three reasons, underneath those three reasons, these are what it impacts, guys. And then someone goes pretty quiet after that. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steven? Um, I mean, I'd have to agree with their argumentation. Um, you know, most people kind of shy away from really arguing with us these days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even if we're wrong, we'll still find a way to weasel out of it. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in today. All right, we have the one and only Steven Garcia, as well as the Dominic Mercer. Thank you so much for coming in today, ranking in the top five of the national debate this year. And I can't wait to see where you guys go from here. Thank you so much again for joining us on This Is Bipsy. My name is Scott Wayne, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys, so much. Appreciate it.